Vidme recently announced that it will shut down on the 15th of December and I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die of not surprise. With no offence meant to Vidme, but we've been here before. Vidme started in 2014 as a user-generated video site. In 2015 it raised a seed round of $3.2 million in venture capital funding, in 2016 it raised a further $6 million of venture capital funding, and now it's 2017 and we're done so long and thanks for all the fish. $9.2 million sounds like a lot of money, and it would be if you were a person, but video sites have three big issues they need to address, and they are expensive issues. In the Medium article they put up explaining their decision, the Vidme team said they were closing because we couldn't find a path to sustainability. Yep, sounds about right. First problem, just having a video site is extremely expensive. Not just because you need a lot of bandwidth so you can serve a lot of users simultaneously, but also because you need to store extremely large files and so hosting is very, very, very expensive. So you have to find some way of paying for that. An alternative to this would be something like BitChute, which uses torrents, but even if that is viable in a technical sense, you're still going to run into the next two problems. Second problem. YouTube has a billion visitors a month, and it's still struggling financially. It has all of the big creators, it has a huge audience, and yet neither of these things is a panacea. New video sites start with zero audience and zero creators. To entice an audience, you need content which is going to appeal to them, which means you need creators to make that content. To entice those creators, you need to offer them something better than they're already getting. But you can't offer creators a large audience because you don't have one, and you can't offer the audience vast amounts of content because you don't have that either. Not to mention the fact that you have to make people aware of the platform in the first place and then entice them onto it. Advertising is expensive and if they get to your platform and they don't see anything they like, chances are you're never gonna see them again. So how do you get people? Well, you could start by having a product that solves some of YouTube's major problems. Dan Olson's video entitled Vidme and Why Platforms Aren't Your Friends has some good points as to the, you know, security issues of YouTube and the collaboration issues that you have with YouTube, and I'm not gonna retread those here, but I'll put a link to it in the doobly-doo. Regardless of which of YouTube's faults you address, though, you better offer something substantially different. You almost certainly can't offer better money to creators than YouTube, unless you have seriously deep venture capital funded pockets. You definitely can't offer a bigger audience. And while the path to monetary success on YouTube for creators is now rarely just from ad revenue, but more from Patreon and other fan funding sites, or brand deals and sponsorships, you still need the audience that makes that viable. You still need an audience big enough that 1% of them can give you money via Patreon, or an audience big enough that a brand would actually be interested in sponsoring your video. Yeah? Yeah. So, what's being offered right now? Seems to me that the main YouTube competitors currently are offering either monetization, which probably doesn't amount to anything substantially better than you can get on YouTube currently, or on Patreon, or freedom of expression. As in, we won't demonetize your videos, even if you're talking about Syrian refugees, or the crisis in the Middle East, or current US legislation. Woo! No demonetization on a platform which probably doesn't have a lot of advertisers anyway. Not really selling it, to be honest. I mean, if you've been demonetized by YouTube because you're talking about controversial things, even if you're doing so in an even-handed or interesting or intelligent way, you're not magically going to become more palatable to advertisers just because you switched platform. If someone's been banned from YouTube and they want to make videos, then they're quids in, I guess, but then that just means that your platform is full of people who have been banned from YouTube. And that probably includes some very, very toxic people who will bring their very, very toxic communities with them. YouTube already has this massive problem with their comment sections being a cesspit, and that's just not going to fly if you're a new video platform looking to expand your audience. You are just not going to be able to entice great Aunt Jen Jennifer or school-age Susie to your platform if everyone knows that it's just a hellhole of rape jokes and links to pornography. Oh yeah, and advertisers don't like small up-and-coming platforms, and they don't like controversy, and they don't like not knowing who their ads are being served to. Yeah, so that's a problem. Thing is, ad revenue is the way that YouTube makes most of its money. It has YouTube Red, yes, but ad revenue is the bedrock of how YouTube sustains itself. And to do that, they have to provide an absolute metric ton of user-generated content which brands are happy to put their names next to, or in front of, or at the end of. There's theoretically a lot of money to be made in online video, but theoretically is not the same as actually 
especially if your model is mostly or even partially reliant on advertisers. As Vidme will tell you, the profit margins to be made from subscriptions to a small video site with a tiny user base are in no way reflective of the actual costs of hosting video. The reason YouTube videos are free is that Alphabet has deep pockets and that ultimately you are the product. You sitting here watching this on your phone or laptop or tablet or whatever. And even if YouTube Red becomes a bigger thing in the future, it's only saleable because it has exclusive content for subscribers and ad-free access to every video on YouTube. And I'm thinking YouTube Red is going to become a major source of revenue from YouTube for creators once they actually manage to roll it out to more countries. I mean, simply because ad rates have not really taken off on YouTube and every time there's a crisis like the ad apocalypse, ad buyers use that to negotiate prices down. And that impacts on YouTube's bottom line and it impacts on the bottom line of creators, which is why most full-time YouTubers don't rely solely on ad revenue and also sell products or have a Patreon or do brand deals and sponsorships. So there you have it. YouTube and Facebook have the money to host a lot of video and so can afford to host everything from the sublime to the ridiculous, thus giving their viewers vast amounts of choice. YouTube and Facebook are where the audiences are and so as a creator, if you want to get money from ad revenue or you want to get money from fan funding or you want to get money from brand deals, you still need an audience and so that's where you gotta go. And the big video sites are the places where millions of person hours of work have gone into algorithms and machine learning and all that jazz to make sure that your ads go on videos that you would like them to, which target the kind of audience that you want to have. New video sites will find it almost impossible to compete with YouTube unless they are A, attached to a much larger company with very deep pockets, looking at you, Facebook and Amazon, or B, the video site in question is offering something substantially better than that which is offered by YouTube. And not only that, but provide a far superior product which is also financially viable. And to the best of my knowledge, no one's done that yet. So Vidme is going the way of blip, of vine, of forever, and no one but no one is really very surprised. Who knows though? Maybe someday a plucky upstart company will do something really, really different and not get screwed over or bought out. But I gotta tell you, I'm not holding my breath. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support this channel, there is of course Patreon and my patrons, or at least some of them, are appearing on the screen next to me as we speak. Things you should expect in the next couple of weeks are a Stuff You Like extra episode about the RPG mashup game. Best game, try it at parties. And maybe, just maybe, a vlog about The Last Jedi as well. See you soon.